Okay, it should be up. Posting the attendance form. I'll just keep posting that for whoever comes. Okay. There's nobody there, so we'll just wait for a second for somebody, anybody, to, uh, for people to come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Okay, I think we can start now. Um, Ryan, just post it one more time. Okay, so today we're going to be learning about uh, k-nearest neighbor. Uh, this one is, uh, well, it depends on what context you're using. It can be, so uh, it can be, uh, I guess, a little bit more powerful than the other ones. Uh, next one we'll be learning is SVMs. Those are really powerful. Um, but so let's get started with this one. So, uh, k nearest neighbor is a uh, classification algorithm. So the last problem, the last one that we did, the logistic regression, the example that we did was actually also a classification problem. But um, just to clarify, a classification problem is just where you identify things in different classes. So for example, here I have images of apples and oranges. So we want to classify. Uh, if, if we were to run a classification algorithm, we could determine like, okay, uh, uh, we have an, uh, three oranges right here and an apple right here, right? Uh, so if, if I showed individual images uh, of these uh, fruits, then it should be able to tell me whether this is an orange or an apple, or I guess you could say apple or not apple, or orange or not orange, or something like that. Uh, you, you would, but it's basically a classification where you could do multiple fruits, like you could determine whether it's uh, apple, orange, pear, or whatever you have, right? Uh, so that's uh, what a classification algorithm is. It classifies as opposed to something like regression where it's trying to predict a value. So what is supervised learning? So supervised learning is basically, so imagine if you are uh, in school and you have a test. Uh, so if you have a test, but imagine if you basically didn't study for anything and your answers are all random, right? So really you have no idea what you're doing, right? You're just trying to randomly put down answers. And so like if it's a multiple choice test with four answer choices, you'll have like a 25%, right? If you go by like, uh, like you'll get a 25% score. If you just go purely randomly, that's what you would expect, something around there, right? But uh, the thing is you don't learn during a test, right? So uh, what we do in supervised learning is we kind of give it a cheat sheet. So what happens is that um, our algorithm compares its answers against the cheat sheet or uh, the uh, correct answer that we give it and it tries to calculate the loss and it tries to uh, correct itself to try and get to the correct answer uh, over time. So uh, that's supervised learning. It's basically where the computer gets the answers and it's trying to correct itself to get closer and closer to the answers uh, and so then you get a better model over time. Okay, so how does KNN work? So KNN uh, so there's uh, discrete, discrete and numerical values. So KNNs work with uh, uh, 
with a um, numerical values because you need to be able to basically graph your data uh, and not necessarily in two or three dimensions or even one dimension. Uh, you, you can graph it in like, you know, I guess hundreds of dep dimensions depending on how many features you have. Uh, you'll see in the example that we have, we're going to have four different features. So basically it'll be four dimensions. But uh, let me just show you how it works. So we're going to have a data set that we input uh, to the algorithm. Uh, so this is the data set right there. And you'll see that the data set has multiple points, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. So, okay. So we have a data set. We have multiple points. Some of them are red and some of them are blue. So what this, represent is that, what this represents is that the blue points are of one class. We'll just say it's class blue, right? Uh, the other one is of class red, right? So you want to classify whether a new data point, if you were to put in there, you have to classify whether that new data point is red or if it's blue class, right? So you'll notice that generally the red points are congregated around this region and generally the blue points are around this region. But you can see there's still some overlap, right? Uh, so you, I guess these would be outliers in this, in this data set, right? Uh, like this point right here or this point right here. So now let's just say we put in an input data, right? So this is some data point, not of a green class, but I just wrote green to just, I just made it in green so that you, uh, it's distinguished from the rest of the points. So we want to determine whether this is of a blue class or if this is of a red class, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to measure the distances from the green point to every other data point in the whole thing, right? So this green point, I only showed uh, five of them here, but uh, in the actual algorithm, you compare it to every single data point that's displayed over here. So once you get all those distances, then you grab k votes, right? So you grab a k number of votes. This is why it's called k and n, k nearest neighbors, right? So it's you grab the k nearest neighbors. In this case, our k number would be five, right? Because we grab the five nearest neighbors, right? Five nearest data points. So. Uh, K nearest neighbors, so for your K value, you typically only want to choose odd values. Uh, that way, you can't have a tie in your vote. So if I only chose four, let's just say if we don't include this last red data point, then we would end up with two blues and two reds, and it would be an indefinite, uh, indefinitive answer, which is why we want to choose uh, an odd number of data points, in this case, five, right? OK, so we have our K number of votes. Uh, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to count these votes. So we see that we have two blues and three reds. So what this would mean is that we have, out of the nearest neighbors, three of them are red. So we would classify this one as a red one. Uh, and you can increase or decrease your k values uh, depending on what kind of application you want, right? Um, so you might sometimes it might be necessary to have uh, a greater number of votes. Sometimes you might need a fewer number of votes. Uh, again, depends on your application. So. That's how KNN works. So now we need to figure out how to calculate the distance, right? So um, whenever we have two dimensions, like in the previous example, we use this formula right here, right? It's based on Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and it's basically you have your two points, and you have the x1 and x2 and y2, and or y1 and y2. And you're getting the, uh, the their differences, right? The difference in the single dimension, so difference in the x-axis and the difference in the y-axis square them, sum them, and take the square root, right? So if you want to calculate it in multiple dimensions, it's the same thing, uh, but you just add the extra dimension. So right here, you take on the z-axis, you're going to do this. And then uh, if you have even more axes, let's just say you have a w-axis, then you would do the same thing, w1 minus w2 squared, and you would add that inside of the square root. So basically, you can generalize it like this. So it's a square root of sum from i equals 1 to n. Uh, beta would just be like uh, beta i is just going to be kind of like the whatever uh, like the difference right here of whichever dimension so like if i was one we would say it's x if i was two we would say the difference in the y's if it was three we would say difference in the z's and we square that and sum them up under the square root so that's our general equation so now let's actually implement this so what we're going to do is let me pull up this file. So, uh, okay, and this one right here. Okay. Okay. Let me go, let me make it bigger. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, 
Oh, that's weird. Okay, anyway, so. Okay. So let me just make these a little bit bigger. Okay, here we go. So you can see we have our ID. Uh, so this is just one, two, three, four, right? Uh, and then, so this is of a plant. So uh, we don't need the ID, so I'm just gonna move over to this side. Okay, so this is of uh, different plants. So you can see the species name, uh, Iris setosa, right? Uh, well, the, you know, the taxonomical name, but uh, so this one is Iris setosa. So based on the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, we're supposed to uh, we're supposed to classify whether it's uh, what species it's part of. So there's uh, this is like a long data set. I think there's like four different kinds of. Okay, this is acting really weird. Uh, I think there's four different kinds of um, species in here uh, to look at. So you saw Iris otosa, Iris versicolor, or Iris virginica. Uh, I have no idea what these are. I don't. I don't uh, I, I don't know what these are, but uh, anyway, so basically we have to classify the plant based on the these uh, measurements, right? So, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So uh, what we'll do is I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to make a new directory. Oh, what is it doing? Okay. I'm gonna make a new directory and we're gonna call it KNN. Uh, and, uh, CD into KNN and we're gonna edit a new file and we're gonna call it uh, KNN.py. Uh, okay. So we don't need this. Um, so what we'll do first is we're gonna have to, uh, let me just make this, oops, uh, just a tad smaller, though, or that way I can actually leave something in there. Uh, it's too big. Okay, so let's go ahead and import. Uh, okay, import pan pandas because uh, we're gonna need to load the data set. Oh, actually, uh, you know what? Let me also go ahead and uh, I'm gonna have to see, uh, copy the file over to this thing. So. Uh, We can do this. Okay. Go and now you can see that the file is right here, um, but we don't need to look at that right now. Okay. We're also going to need to import the math class. Um, okay. So now first, let's go ahead and load the data set. So we'll call it the x um, because so whenever you're in machine learning, you have your x data and your y data. X is the input. Y is what your is the correct answer basically, right? In the supervised learning. Um, so, sorry, I'm drinking some water. Um, okay, so let's just read the CSV file. So uh, it's called iris.csv right here. And we're going to have to do uh, header equals none. Uh, so that way it'll read it correctly because um, it's going to try and read the first line and there's a bug. But basically, you have to do head equals none. Okay, so we're gonna come up with a test point, right? So we're gonna say 2.1, uh, 4.88, and 3.3. Uh, you can come up with whatever random measurements you want, right? So this was what sepal width, sepal length, pedal width, and pedal length, right? Uh, so that's what these values represent. So now uh, we're gonna actually. Uh, run the KNN, right? So let's uh, write it. So we're going to need an empty array called distances. We'll call it zero. Uh, we'll cre create an empty list, right? So uh, this is where we're going to store the distances, right? So, okay. For i in range of, we're going to go from 1 to the length of x, right? So uh, basically, we want to go through this uh, this uh, data frame, right? So, okay, we're gonna start off, so we're gonna say the distance is gonna be zero at the start, okay? Uh, so then now for j in range of four, because we have, um, 
because we have uh, you know four features. So we're gonna go for j in range of four. So distance uh, plus equals. Uh, so we're gonna have to. Okay, this is not gonna make sense right now. I'll show. You, I'll explain it in a second. So. Um, gonna compare these values. Uh, so right now what we're doing by the way is we're gonna try and find the distances between this point and all of the other points in the data set. So again, we're gonna square that. Okay. So now what we need to do is distance equals math dot uh, square root of distance. Okay, and distances dot append, uh, and then we're gonna have to append. Uh, we're gonna append a tuple called distance, or not called, but uh, that contains the distance as well as the index. Okay, so here's what we're doing here. We're gonna use um, we're gonna use the so we're gonna start off with the distance zero because that's you know so this is just to do the calculation. So then for every single feature, right? So we have four features. So if you remember in the equation, we had to take the um, sum of the squared squared differences for each dimension, right? So what we do here is for each of the data points, that's the, so if we look at, if we just take this part, right? So x dot i lock uh, of i, that's gonna be our data point, right? So that, for this loop right here, uh, so for this loop right here, for the, just these two lines, the i remains static, right? Uh, the j is the only thing that's actually iterating from 0 to 3, right? So what we're doing is we're going through each feature, right? So j is iterating between 0 and 3 to account for uh, 0 to 3, right? Uh, so we're going to take those as floats because these are uh, another data type right now. Our, so we want to be able to do an operation on them as floats. Um, so we're gonna take those as floats, and we are gonna so we're gonna use the iloc function to get the exact value we're looking for at i j right, and then we're gonna take the difference and we're gonna square it right like just like in the thing, and then after we run through all four of the dimensions right, then we're gonna have to take the square root to finally calculate distance, and then at the end of this at the end of this list right here we're gonna append. The distance, but we're also going to. I'm also appending the the index because we're going to need that in a, uh, in a second. Okay, so now we know all of our distances, right? It should be stored right here in distances. If I uh, print distances, uh, we should be able to write this and can run k and end up pi. Uh, what does it say? Oh, sorry. Okay, I uh, put. Let's put header. Okay, header equals nine. Okay, there we go. Python. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a mess to look at. But basically, you'll see. Okay, so the these values go from one, two, three, four, so on, right? Uh, last one is 150. So there's 150 different data points. These are all the distances, right? So from the first data point, we're 5.01. That that's a distance, right? Basically. Uh, then this is the distance from the second one, and so on, right? Uh, so you can see like some of these get really big, uh, like this one's 90, 90 units away, 91 units away, uh, 119, uh, yeah, looks like as it uh, goes on, it seems to get bigger, right? Uh, if you remember the data set, that means that that's, this is probably going to be an iris setosa, right? Because it's very close to those first data points, which were all iris setosa, but let's uh, continue with this. So. Okay, we got our distances. So now let's go ahead and, so we're gonna have to sort the distances, right? So um, this way we can get the top distances, like the top K distances, right? So we're gonna sort the distances. So I'll just actually write a comment to this as uh, sort distances. Also, if you're following along, you should also go ahead and add comments. If you're in a Jupyter notebook, then you can uh, go ahead and add um, those, uh, those markdown blocks. Uh, that'll be even better. So, okay, anyway, so now that we got our sorted votes, now we'll need to get uh, the first uh, K votes. First K votes. Okay. 
So we'll set k to something like 3 right now, right? Okay. So we'll say distances equals distances and then from the beginning to k, right? So what this does is it gets the points from 0 to 3, well, really 0 to 2, right? Index is 0 to 2. Uh, that's the first three data points, which um, it's going to be sorted. So uh, that means it's the uh, the um, closest three distances. Okay. So now that we got that, uh, we're going to create an empty dictionary called votes. So the reason I created a dictionary is that for every single class, right? So the uh, Iris Sotosa, Iris Versicolor, I think it was. Uh, anyways, all of those, uh, all of those species, we want to have those as the keys, and we want to be able to get the. Um, we want to have those as the keys, and we want to be able to use the number of votes as the as the value for those keys. Okay, so for i in range k, because we're going to parse to the distances, the top k distances, right? So. Uh, in range of k, so species equals x dot i lock. Okay, uh, distances i one dot i lock minus one. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna get so distances one right. So if you remember right here that we took, so distances of i is gonna give us give us a tuple. So then from there, we wanna go to one, right? Uh, so that way we can get index the uh, x dialog. That's why I uh, kept the index inside of this tuple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for, inside of distances, we wanna look at each of the, um, each of the distances, and then we wanna get the index, and so then, from our main data set x, right? We want to pull that uh, the 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 um, what's it called the the one that we're looking for the k, right? So the closest distance and the second closest distance and so on, right? For k three in this case. Then we want to i lock minus one. So if you remember in Python, minus one means the last value in an iterable. So the last value, if you remember, in the data set was the name of the species. So this is why we're storing this in the species. So basically, we're finding the value in here, and we're going to uh, find the species that's associated for that value. OK. So now we got that. So now we want to say if the species, species is in our votes. So if this species is already in the votes, then we just want to take the uh, value for that key, for this for that key, and we want to increment it, right, by one, because we want to add a vote to it. So, and then if we don't already have it, right, so if we haven't come across this class yet, then we're going to say that the vote for this species equals one. Okay. So what this does is it's going to, so what this segment does is it's going to see if this dictionary already knows about this species. If it does, then we that's great. We just add one to that, uh, to that uh, key. If not, then we're going to create a new key and add uh, one as the value. OK. So now we want to go ahead and print. So now we want to print out what the results were, right? So we want to figure out which of the keys or which of the species has the maximum number of votes. So we're going to use a max function. Uh, okay, and we're going to give it votes as the argument, and we're going to have to use key argument, and we're going to give it votes. Get. Okay, so what this does is it's going to use the max function. So and then the key is the votes dot get. So votes dot get is means that it's going to get the value of, of that key, right? So it's going to look through all of these keys, all, uh, all of the keys inside of this votes, and based on the value of those keys, it's going to select the max. So what that means it's it's going to print out the name of the species with the maximum number of votes. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So we'll write and quit. 
And okay, so you can see that this point was irisitosa. Okay, so now let's try and see. Uh, so if I open up uh, one more time, so and then K and N, and we want to get the Microsoft history, and I'll just open up in LibreOffice. Now, uh, okay, let me just move that over here. Uh, let's see. I don't think I can zoom it, or I probably can, but uh, it's going to be a bit difficult. So, uh, but basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to test this out. Uh, I'm going to try and get something that's numbers that are similar to another species. So we got Iris Setosa. Uh Let's see if we can get something uh, numbers that are closer to uh, something like uh, uh, Iris Versicolor or something, right? So uh, let's see. We have. Right here, I'm just going to try and directly put one of these in. Uh, it's okay, so 5.6, uh, 5.6. Now, remember, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to choose iris versicolor, even though I'm directly plugging in iris versicolor point. Uh, if this is on the border or if it's this is this happens to be an outlier, then it won't necessarily be the case that this is going to pick by iris versicolor. So, because remember, we're not using one vote, we're using multiple votes. Okay. So let's run that, and it still shows Iris Setosa. It's weird. Uh, so let's just make sure that nothing weird is going on. So I'm going to print out uh, distances. Print it out. Okay. Okay, so let's see. We know that from, uh, let's see, IDs of. 51 to 100 are iris. So let's just see. So this is 67 as the ID. So let's see if 67, if it calculated the value correctly. So yeah, no, okay. Something's going wrong because you see here, this distance should be zero, but it's uh, it's calculating it as zero. Unless I, did I do it after it sorted? Yeah, this is a sorted list. Uh, so yeah, let's see, five, uh, that's uh, Iris Sotosa. Uh, what's going on here? I don't think it's uh, calculating the distances correctly because uh, whenever I try to um, plug in a point directly, uh, the value should be zero, but it's printing some other value. Uh, for So the closest point, so I plugged in, let's see, right here. So I plugged in an iris versicolor plant and I plugged in the values exactly. Um, and it should be printing, uh, should be giving us a distance of zero, but it's instead giving us um, uh, some other distance. Let's see. Uh, so the ID is 67, so right here, this one should have a distance of zero. Okay. this right now. Um, okay, so these are the 
non square rooted distances. So one of these should be zero. Right? Um, but it's not. Uh, Oh wait, is it because I did, hang on, I think if I try this, let's try this now, there we go, okay, that was the problem, okay, so what happened was, uh, okay, I had to fix this in the GitLab, but basically what happened was that, um, so if you remember from the data set, uh, the zeroth index for the for the so the column basically right here this is the zeroth column this first one uh, so that one is just the ID uh, when it's actually supposed to be the uh, that we're supposed to be using the the what is it sample width I think so you just need to add a j plus one over here because um, that way we can get you know the actual values not the ID okay uh, I'll so, right yeah, now. that's, yeah, okay. So, okay. now we can also go ahead and, let me go ahead and print the votes that we can see. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, so you can see that just all three went to the iris versus color. So, uh, let's go ahead and edit this now. Um, so first of all, let's try and set the k to a higher value. So let's try something like okay, let's just try eleven, right? So uh, maybe we might get some variation. Okay, no, all of them are just uh, okay. What if we try? I'm just trying to get uh, different classes in here. So let's try. I don't know, twenty twenty-five or something. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now you got, uh, you've got uh, 21 votes towards Iris Versicolor and four towards Iris Virginica. Um, so again, you have to decide on what your K value should be. Um, so in this case, you know, we chose 25, but this is just so I can uh, show you that, uh, uh, just to, you know, show you that it's calculating the closest 25 points and the of the 25 points, four of them ended up being Irish Virginica. But you can see actually uh, that the clusters, now I can't show you a four dimensional graph because you know that's not possible. But if we were to do a four dimensional graph, you would notice that uh, these plants tend to like cluster very closely uh, together. I mean, I don't know about very closely, again, there's no four dimensional graph, but uh, they uh, are clustering close together. Now for us, that would be impossible to see just by looking at that spreadsheet, right? For us, all we see is a bunch of numbers, but what this allows it to do is that uh, it allows it to uh, it allows it to look at all the data. Uh, the computer can look at it, kind of like a, in a in space, and it can see like okay, which cluster is this the closest to this data point? Uh, so it's kind of like if you were given uh, like um, uh, I don't know what uh, I don't know an example, but basically you would. If I give you a two-dimensional graph, right, that's that's fairly simple to look at. Uh, you would be able to look at the data and tell me the classifications, and you'd be able to look at it and directly tell. So what we're doing here is we're basically automating that process with the computer, where the computer should be able to look at the data like uh, that and analyze it spatially, right? So uh, that way it can look at the distances and figure out which cluster it's the closest to. And by figuring out which cluster it's the closest to, uh, it can... Um, determine what the classification is. So uh, that's all that we have for today. So if, uh, does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Well,
thank you for joining today. Um, and next week we're going to be. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't really have anything else to say. So yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so next week we're going to be learning about uh, SVMs. SVMs are very powerful. Um, like in some cases, they even have. Uh, like they have the uh, efficacy that's com comparable to neural networks uh, in certain applications, like uh, cla uh, image classification. Um, so like for, if you want to identify what character is in an image, right, uh, in a handwritten uh, image. So if I write, like say for example, a true with my hand and I take an image of it, uh, you could put it through an SVM and it would be reasonably accurate, accurate with um, this prediction. So we're, we're going to go over that next week. Uh, so you can join us then. Thank you and have a nice day.